Darth Kermit here with part two of my Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes series on the Separatist Might Territory Battle. This part will cover the Ackley Battle in Phase 2. Before I go into any detail, know that this is a very complex battle with a significant amount of RNG. If you don't have well-geared and modded Geonosians, then be prepared for a lot of frustration. Now first, a brief overview of the event for those who haven't done it before or find the event confusing. This event is actually a three-way battle between your team of Geonosians, a group of Jedi, and the Acle. The Acle and the Jedi will randomly attack your team and each other. There will be four Jedi at the beginning, and they will respawn with random Jedi replacements every time the Acle becomes enraged. Your goal is to keep the Jedi under control so they don't wipe out your team with AoEs while trying to kill the Acle. With that explanation out of the way, let's talk gear. You can see here that I have Geonosian Brood Alpha at Relic 3. Can you do this fight without having GBA Relic? Yes, but I wouldn't recommend even trying. My Sun Fac and Soldier are bare G12. No G12 gear at all. My Spy and Poggle are at G11. This is very low gear for this event. I will be making up for this low gear with very good mods. And here they are. On GBA, we're going for speed, then defense, then protection, then health. Because GBA's lead gives each Geonosian ally an extra 15,000 health and protection, Defense has a very significant impact on the whole team, so you'll notice a theme of adding defense to all of them. Speed is particularly important on GBA for this event, because you need to be able to use the event ability Beast Tamer whenever the Ackley becomes enraged, and only GBA can use this ability. Next up is Sun Fac. Here, we focus on defense, then protection and health, and then speed. Next is Geo Soldier. He gets crit chance first, then speed, then defense. Crit chance is very important on Soldier because he gains 25% turn meter whenever he crits. He also gives all Geos an extra 15% critical chance, so you only need to get him to 85% with mods to guarantee that he always crits. I only have mine at 75%, but that'll be good enough here. Next on the list is Spy. My Spy is only gear 11, which is a severe impediment because I'm going to have a very hard time doing enough damage. I highly recommend at least gear 12 for Geo Spy. I'm going to try to make up for it with good mods, but even so, damage will be low from him. Priority is crit damage, then crit chance, then damage. Plus as much defense as you can get on him while focusing on those others. Speed is unimportant on Spy because he gains 35% turn meter every time a Geonosian ally, including himself, inflicts a debuff on its turn. And since Soldier and Poggle both inflict debuffs on their basic attacks and Sunfac inflicts debuffs on his special, Spy gets fed a ton of turn meter. Last up is Poggle. Here we just focus on speed and defense for all the reasons previously listed. Okay, let's get to the event. One thing to note whenever you're going into battle with the Geonosians is that you want to have them in a particular order. So Geonosian Brood Alpha obviously always has to be in the leader slot. But next, you always want Sun Fac. This is because, theoretically, the Geonosians attack in this order. So this way, Sun Fac will be clearing buffs, then Geonosian Soldier will be applying Tenacity down, and then Geonosian Spy and Poggle will be able to do more damage and apply the ability block that Poggle applies on his basic.
So right off the bat, you have your first big RNG problem. There's no telling which Jedi will be present at the start of the event. Three of the possible Jedi that can spawn have AoE attacks that do massive damage to your team. This time, we have three. We have Kit Fisto, who does a big AoE. We have the Jedi Vanguard, who can do actually a very mass massive AoE that will do more, almost as much damage as the Ackley's AoE. And then we have the Jedi Sentinel, which also does a big AoE and goes into stealth whenever, whenever they're hit. So our first move is always going to be the Beast Tamer ability from, or I'm sorry, the Beast Warden ability from Geonosian Brood Alpha. One of the main things to do here is whenever you use this ability, don't target the Ackley. Target one of the Jedi so that you can go ahead and apply uh, a ability block on him. So in this case, the one we're going to worry about first is Jedi Sentinel. Unfortunately, we didn't apply ability block, and that is very unfortunate. Poggle only has an 80% chance to apply it. Next, we're going to go after our Jedi Vanguard over here because he has the most damaging of the AoEs. Well, we're not landing any ability blocks. That is very unfortunate. But so far, they haven't used an AoE on us, so we're getting lucky. Whenever we call an extra ally to assist for some reason, we're going to call the Geonosian Brute because he actually does more damage than anybody else on the team, mostly because my spy is only at gear 11. Another thing to note with what abilities you should be using is Whenever you have Geonosian Soldier up, you want to attack with his basic. On his basic, he applies Tenacity down. Because he's applying Tenacity down, he will feed 35% uh, turn meter to your spy. So your spy will get to go quite often, especially because your soldier gets to go quite often because he gets a turn meter boost every time he gets a critical hit, even when he's attacking out of turn. Now the Ackley is about to hit in rage, so we're going to buy us some time uh, by shooting our little last Jedi over here. Okay, this time we have three AoEs again. Uh, we're going to go for our Jedi, one of our Jedi Sentinels first. Good, we applied. We managed to apply ability block that time. Uh, now we're going to go after this Jedi Vanguard because, because it's Poggle's turn. We want to be able to apply Tenacity down to the character before Poggle hits them. So we don't want to risk just sending this Sentinel into stealth 
and Poggle not being able to apply ability block. And now we use Beast Tamer again, now that the Acklay is in Enraged again. go ahead and heal up here. Now we're trying to buy time again. So we're going to attack the Jedi. Let me take this opportunity here to explain what I mean by buying time. One of the Ackley's event mechanics is that it gains 5% turn meter every time it takes damage. So if you just keep targeting the Ackley, you'll be feeding it tons of turn meter and your abilities won't be off cooldown when you need them. In particular, Beast Warden. Oh no. Well, that's not good. We're going to have a big problem here when he enrages and then is able to AoE. So that's the thing you want to avoid most, is him being able to AoE right after enraged. Uh, thankfully, we survived it thanks to all that defense. lot harder without spy. Perfect. Now that we don't have spy, we're not going to worry about using our basic to always apply tenacity down. This time we're going to call Geonosian Brute. Try to get some more damage in here.
This AoE is already used, so we don't have to worry about him. We do have an AoE coming up, though, so we're going to try to buy time and go after him anyway. We are almost there. So let's try to get some more damage in. Now we're going to buy time. heal and then we're going to try to finish him off. And there we go. So we pulled it off even with the loss of Gian Ocean Spy, our super low damage to begin with, and our low gear. Mods are super important for this event. Make sure you mod right, make sure you mod defense. That defense is why we were able to survive so many AoEs. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment down below about what you'd like to see from me in the future. Until next time. I find your lack of rainbow connection disturbing.